The following podcast is brought to you by the Jonas Podcasting Network, found exclusively at wrestlingwithjonas.com. Just a little bit late getting started, so we did the Welcome short everyone. intro. Come Welcome on, everyone. Night. Buckle boy. Yeah, we'll see if we'll we'll see if that's if that sticks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we could call it Monday Night Boom Boom, or but then I think we, we'd... Monday Night Boom Boom sounds like a different kind of show. Yeah, it, it does, and we'd also have to ask, you know, Colt Cabana if that was okay. Exactly. Um, I'm your boy Daniel McKee. I'm joined here by fantastic wrestling fans from all over the world. Introduce yourself to my right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, presenting the one, the only, your host of the Chop Shop Live of Buckaboo Entertainment, the one Welshmeister, Luke Hunter, Welsh, bada bing, bada boom. All right. Lovely, lovely intro every single time. And we've got our good buddy, Hector, our, our newsman. Hector, what's up, dude? Ladies and gentlemen, this is... The Mexican Melster Hector Hernandez. I'm new to Buckle Bomb, still trying to learn the ropes. I'm still getting a lot of rookie hazing, but I'm doing my best to take it one day at a time. Let's go. <laughs> I think we've been pretty pretty nice to you. We, we're, we're still harder. I, 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 love the way you, I love the way you came back last week on the chop shops. Like I've been I've I've been gone a while, but I've been coming back. Like you, you're the you're the you're the sports infotainment version of CM Punk. Like you've been gone a while, and now you're, <laughs> you're back to here. To I, I was at the show. I was at that show, and I was actually really inspired by that because I actually like, I was just watching him enjoy the moment. I'm just trying to enjoy the moment because you don't know when it's gonna end. Do, do, do you know what? Like very few few moments in time in wrestling time will just make you wake up at any minute of the day and think fuck i love wrestling like i, I remember watching uh survivor series 2016 and 98 uh, 88 seconds or a, a, a 87 seconds even uh when goldberg kills lesnar and that was at like near 4 4 30 in the morning over here and i'm like like just like what the fuck so uh, at three in the morning what a month <laughs> ago a month ago a month ago today cult of personality twitter explodes i explode i'm like wow i can't believe it's been a month yeah it's wild it doesn't feel like a month it, 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 it yeah it feels a lot short hey but you know what 87 seconds is two times right Okay, I tried to see if you'd walk into it Couldn't be, because you, you hit me with it earlier, and it's actually four minutes, so it doesn't work out. But anyway, we got a lot of things to talk about. The most important topic of the day we are going to start with, Max Caster has challenged Tony Khan to a rap battle. <laughs> yeah. Um, clearly what's I'm, on everyone's mind. I mean, Max, considering Max Caster is lucky to still be employed by the company, um, I mean this this is this is playing into the fire, isn't it? It's it's seeing all the heat that's that's burning uh of the remnants of, of, of the fire and just and just poking it and adding a bit more flame to it. Yeah. You know? Hector, what do you think? To me, he's just doing it for entertainment purposes. I don't I don't see any other reason to do it. I think that if Tony Khan really wanted to, he could beat him in it. He could beat him because Tony Khan, when he wants to turn on his, his uh, wrestling fandom, he can. And when he needs to turn it off, he'll turn it off. But he can turn it on at any moment. So, oh, don't, Yeah, if, don't get wrong. Tony Khan's great on the stick. You know, he can talk. So it's it's not like he's he's just a principal owner of the company for the, for the business side of it. He can he, he can go, you know? Yeah. yeah Moxie. He's got that charisma. He's a likable guy. I want to give him a hug every time I see him, personally. Um, so we've had... Uh, I want to. I just wanted to start with that as kind of a fun thing because what we're about to talk about is not very fun, and that is the plane ride from hell. Um, if you watched Dark Side of the Ring this week, you saw a lot of allegations uh, towards some very popular and uh, top guys in the WWE, uh, stemming from an incident that happened on a plane ride. We've all heard of it, but if you, just in case you haven't, um, and even if you have, you should just go watch that anyway. It's uh, it's not good but it is very 
interesting. Um, Tommy Dreamer has had to apologize for a lot of his comments. Uh, Ric Flair has, has had it ads pulled from television um it's it's not good no and judge like i suppose i may as well throw my two cents into the ring here now is that we all know about the plane ride from hell it's it's in wrestling infamy forevermore um and we we, we knew about the the myth and fables of of rick flair on planes and and what he can be like and you know we i, I think yeah there was an element to us all where we did shrug it off because it's, it's Ric Flair. But when you heard Heidi's testimony and hear her stories, fuck me, did it all become real in an instant. Like, that's that's a woman that's been traumatized, been deeply affected by what's happened almost what, nearly nearly 20 years ago. It's, it's, it's just... It's, it's 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 inexcusable. Um, Tommy Dreamer's uh, today has now been removed from Busted Open Radio. Yep. Um, on top of the apology, um, he's off. He's off of Impact TV. He's off of everything. Yeah, and you know, it's as much as I can hear what he's saying about it being a gimmick, and that's just Flair being but like. It's still, it's still very wrong. Like it's it's still yeah it should not have happened in in any era and yeah it's there's so many different elements that even now is is, is insane and just crazy to get your head around you know it's not yeah, often it, that it's not often that wrestling fans sort of have to deal with this dark reality you know and yeah, it's a lot of people, yeah. Uh, I, I finished this this is a long two cents <laughs> hey you go um, ahead it's not often that we have to deal with it because and a lot of people are saying well dark side of the ring it's just pre presenting ne the negative impacts of, of of wrestling and as much as their evidence is well they're bringing up benoit they're looking into their own heart case they're doing this they're, and they're telling stories that need to be told at the end of the day that's that's what makes it such cultivating viewing every single episode because they are shedding light on the bruiser brody and the, the the murder of bruiser brody they're shedding light on you know the accident with owen hart we will definitely come back to it later on uh, in in this show they are shedding light on the cte of chris benoit um and the mental health and and, and the, the two year between eddie and, and chris uh dying and now here they are with the plane ride from hell and just yeah th this is what they're here for they need to be telling these stories and the fact that dreamer has put his foot in it shows that he's he's, he's still a bit far, uh, behind the times and i think that the, the last point is this so long as there's good coming from this and that we we can all collectively move on and apologize jim ross has said if if he doesn't have to talk about it again then he'll be a very happy man and i think he's right um we we, we can we can be content with ourselves as as fans and say yeah it happened we've apologized we've learned our lessons we're never gonna let it happen again i think so, yeah. we can yeah that's very well said luke and i think we can take a we can take we can be happy in the fact that we've seen how good AEW's locker room culture is, and we can see the evolution of people learning from those incidents and learning from not just, you know, mid card guys like top guys, Ric Flair, Brock Lesnar, you know, uh, and we, you, you can learn from their mistakes. And now you've created a whole, whole new company that seemingly has a really good locker room situation and a good vibe and is very uh, conscious of all that uh all that type of behavior so hector i, I, th I think it's worth to add as well like even post speaking out movement where you know the wrestling culture mm -hmm. globally has become more aware and more secure and sort of safeguarding uh you know the, the next generation of wrestlers coming through be they male or female or or however they want to identify is that everyone is there to have a good time and that you shouldn't have to
be fearful of of incidents like that and and to go through what what whatever you what you face and that the times of old no longer is this and you know it's been said of the entertainment industry had that time certainly they've they've had it more publicly than, than wrestling but wrestling time has has has, has come and we're, we're starting to see the end of it which is which is relieving that we're, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel mm. hector do you have anything that you'd like to add to that well i i just love listening to luke talk so it's when soothing this, isn't it <laughs> yeah it's very, it's very soothing i i i almost lost my train of thought but okay so when when this first broke i didn't understand it because i, I didn't watch it um um, live like everybody else did. I watched it last night, and it made me think of how stacked the WWE roster was at that time, and there were a lot of personalities on that plane. Mm-hmm. And I would, I would imagine that with all those personalities, that things would explode from time to time. But to me, this is like wow. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to challenge you there, Hector, and and this is one of the main points that that. I think we we all should have should have um could could could, could turn back time we would definitely remove the NWO should never have been near WWE in 2002 even, oh. even Scott Hall should never Very have been much employed by the company like yes he was the, the draw he, he, he <laughs> did you know he fought Steve Austin at WrestleMania X8 the match was shit like we had Rock Hogan and Steve Austin against Scott Hall like come on it wasn't 1996 anymore, and Hall was in an awful condition. Um, because you know, yes, he's Scott Hall is a fantastic case where he's come out the other side, and you know, he was in a very, very poor place. And you know, thank the Lord we have people like da- Diamond Dallas Page in, in in our in our society. But you know, it's he should never have been anywhere near a wrestling ring back, back then. Um, I, I agree with you. There, no argument there. And uh, it also makes me think that no matter um, what some people may think, that you should always um, believe if somebody has a accusation, you should always believe them until they're proven, proven otherwise. Mm. So it's really made me think of, man, you got to take people at their word, really, no matter what, because mm. God knows what happens behind closed doors. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There's certainly no more argument for the boys will be boys anymore, and uh, that's why Tommy Dreamer's uh, comments were so tone deaf. Um, you yeah. might have even understood if he'd said that, you know, in 2002 or 2003, year after that happened. Not that it would be okay, but it would be more understandable. But you, in 2021, we obviously know uh, we're just well, we're smarter and we're more aware of that now thank god so and but um, the dark side of the ring should never be canceled by the way i think it's one of the greatest shows out there so i don't think it should be <laughs> i do think it's wild though that you have chris jericho narrating all this and and i don't i think i mean with flair you know i think we expected him to show up on aew sometime soon with andrade i don't you know he was he was in mexico for the uh triple mania event so uh, you wonder if that's going to happen now like is he still going to be treated like rick flair and say oh well you know like is rick flair canceled we we, 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 we said it daniel didn't we we said it on on our platform rick flair doesn't need to do anything rick flair like and this was unfortunately part of the reason of of the whole documentary right rick flair is a made man rick flair is the 16 time world champion rick flair is done it all in 30 40 years of wrestling rick flair is uh, doesn't need to do anything else now and the fact that you know y- yes he if <laughs> jim ross reflected on whether he should have faced further sanction in 2002 yeah he should have even though flair was in a bad place he should have absolutely um the fact that you know that the only scratch that flair faces now is is advert has taken off and um the broken skull session episode is off and and even the episode of uh wwe story time that's that's all, all the sort of main uh sanctions he faced so far um shows how much rick flair 
as much as, as much of a made man, but as much of you know that's what he's built up. I mean, he's. Uh, I, I don't want to play devil's advocate and say right, we need to bring him fully down, but and I'd, I'd like to think he's not. Oh God, it's so it's it's such a difficult one, you know. Like I'd, I'd, I'd hate to it's think tough. that he's come out the other side and he's he's not like that anymore. And you know, he's he's like even in the last few years, he's a changed man. Of course, he is. But yeah, like he's still. Man, it's still tough. Yeah. I feel it like we could talk about this for a whole nother hour uh, if yeah. we wanted to. Can, can we talk about gold dusting and drunk on the plane? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. So apparently, yeah, no, nah, I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm, done, I'm done with this topic. Can we, can we talk about the, the, the uh, cut the um, segue in, in one of the uh, things about Brock Lesnar fighting Mr. Perfect? In a shoot fight, and uh, Brock Lesnar declined to comment. <laughs> and Mister Perfect was sent away. Like of everything that was that happened on that plane, he's the guy that, that got fired. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Uh, I'm, not well, saying that, is, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. You know what he did was was not worse because he was putting drugs allegedly, in in people's drinks and stuff like that. And you know he's probably just as bad. And we don't know what happened before that. Um, Hector. But if if I'm if I'm uh, Mr. Perfect, I'm thinking, I was thinking, why would you try the rookie Hayden stuff on Brock Lesnar? Yeah, of all people, so that was his first year in the company. I'm like, why would you try that hook rookie stuff on on Brock Lesnar? Because you know you're not gonna win. Imagine yeah. being on an airplane and on. Brock Lesnar's running right. I at mean, you. It, it it does create a, a, a fascinating what if though if they had decided to take sanction and, and fire Brock Lesnar in two thousand and two May two thousand and two before he even won King of the Ring pre UFC. Oh. Forget UFC at, at that point before he'd won the, the, the beaten the Rock at SummerSlam before he had been crowned and the torch had been passed. Mm -hmm. What would we? What 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 reality would he be living in today if he'd been sanctioned back then? He'd been fired and he'd gone a different path. That's a good question. Yeah, think of all the times that we've said "ugh" when when Brock Lesnar sh shows up again and how he's always kind of been that card in the in the back of uh, Vince's pocket that he could just play whenever he wanted to or whenever he thought he had to. Like we would be living in a very different reality uh, if we didn't have Ric Flair and Brock Lesnar for the last twenty years kind of crazy statement to say um yeah. but let's move on uh we got a we had a comment earlier and uh couldn't agree with you more robert sternberg huge week for a mm, mm, disagree i mean, disagree as much as, much as i l like grand slam at arthur ash um seeing M uh, emma Rad radicanu the canadian uh win the uh the u.s uh women's title um seeing wrestling at Arthur Ashe is gonna be amazing. Um <laughs> we're fucking getting Brian Danielson versus Kemi Omega lads. Like what? Like what? Um but but yeah, like, I think bearing in mind we didn't know just what we were getting into with, with all out um and the excitement between that doesn't even come close to what we're at now with the uh, grand slam and rampage because you know there's <laughs> unless unless we're going to watch the programs and we're in for even more shocks and surprises and debuts and and madness and i, I that there has to be at least one tennis spot i want to see novak Djokovic or federer just whack chris jericho around hmm. there just give me one of those stupid silly spots like that or I don't know. McEnroe gets some, just something s stupid. Hey, I'm I'm way into. I've watched a lot of tennis that's happened in that stadium. I'm I was a tennis player growing up. It is the ultimate place to watch two people go one on one, or in you know some cases it'll be two on two and three on in three. America. But you know what I mean. Um, right. It's uh, it's great. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm I'm really excited about this card. For those of you that don't know, we obviously got Kenny Omega versus Brian Danielson on television. What the fuck? Uh, Cody Rhodes versus Malachi Black. MJF, Brian Pillman, Britt Baker versus Ruby Soho. 
uh, and Sting and Darby Allen, Ruby Soho, and Britt Baker got into uh, a little bit of a promo promo battle on on Rampage, and I thought it was I was kind of annoyed seeing um, someone take another shot at the WWE, but it was a really good promo. I'm not, they I'm can look really into they? it. <laughs> Like R- Ruby and 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 Brian and Adam Cole, of course they can take shots at WWE because they've they've come out the other side and they're, they're in much better places creatively and professionally. Right. Uh, you, you know, we, we were talking on the Chop Shop about Tommaso Ciampa and uh, Johnny Gargano and how creatively restricted they are within NXT and even the main roster system. But here we are with Adam Cole, baby, uh, and even Ruby. So who Ruby Riot? Let's face it, was never going to be a women's main eventer uh, in that company when, be- especially big time Becky is is walking around now. So the fact that she's able to mix it up with Britt Baker DMD, who is putting in fantastic, fantastic audience interaction uh, at the moment, it's 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 perfect. Like that, it's borderline the best women's wrestling in the world at the moment. It's going to be a really fantastic match, and I hope I hope that it gets the time that it deserves. Hector, we were talking about this earlier. They have a tendency to cut these women's matches short. If you if they cut this one short, I think everyone's going to riot, right? Yeah, no pun intended. Definitely so, definitely so. But I, I'm jacked for I'm jacked for uh, for Grand Slam and Rampage. I was at All Out, and we got all the surprises at All Out, and I was literally like, "What the fuck is next?" Because you literally gave us everything. I was kind of, I, I kind of assumed that they would give us a couple surprises and say something for Arthur Ashe, but I was like, "What the fuck is coming next?" Because he literally gave us everything. Yep. So they gotta have something planned. If they give Sting another spike pile driver, I'm gonna write a strongly worded letter to Tony Khan and ask him to please stop doing that. <laughs> I can't... Do not kill my Sting. Please Good. do not kill my Sting. Oh, I was so nervous. And, you know, I'm glad that it was FTR that did it. Obviously, they're fantastic wrestlers. They're not going to drop Sting on his head. But, I mean, <laughs> uh, it was that was a lot for me. Um, let's talk about the Rampage card real quick. We get Powerhouse Hobbs or CM Punk. CM Punk on TV, first time in seven years. Mm-hmm. Um, we get a Lights Out match. Eddie Kingston, John Moxley versus Minoru Suzuki and Lance Archer. Yeah. We have an awesome tag team match. Another awesome tag team match. Well, I guess the first one's more of a street fight than anything uh lucha brothers santana and ortiz private party and butcher and blade that's going to be fun uh the butcher and the blade and lucha brothers had an awesome match on rampage if you didn't uh see it i thought it was really good i liked the ending it was different uh you should go and watch it it's really cool uh anna J versus penelope ford adam cole and the young bucks the super clicks back christian cage and jurassic express and uh men of the year versus jericho and hager crazy crazy it's 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 card it's 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 that, that like between the dynamite and the, and the rampage cards it's pay-per-view worthy isn't it oh yeah that's, that's that's what you want to see on revolution or full gear if you watch you know, them back to back i mean that's a pay-per-view but this, this is what I've, I've, I've been trying to sleep on for the last sort of few days is that getting danielson and omega so quickly instead of wait keeping us waiting to at least november Yes, the shock factor is fantastic, and they are some of the best wrestlers in the world. Saw that when when Hulk Hogan showed up at WCW, they they stuck him immediately with Flair. Um, is uh, is this the best way to do it? And if if this is the best way to do it, does Kenny Omega lose? Well, to me, they have to come up with an interesting finish because, like, it all depends on what the finish is. Because I would assume that that's going to be the main event. Um, full gear, uh, a return for Omega and and Danielson. So they got to come up with some kind of interesting finish to make you want to watch it again. Because, like, well, cause I, like I, I think that there's still a window of, of possibility that whoever wins uh, on Wednesday night faces Paige at Full Gear in November. I'm way into that. I mean, how long are we going to get this match for? I mean, I want at least half an hour. Well, it's only a two-hour show. Give me, three, give me three hours of Danielson versus Omega. Just give. Get, yeah, you can do the third hour on Rampage. <laughs> <laughs> like, just in in my vein, like this. 
<laughs> you call yourself the Mexican melter, Hector. This this has the potential to give Dave Meltzer full on Viagra and uh, to keep him pumping out nine, ten star ratings because <laughs> they are that good, you know. Well, I still hate the fact that all the American matches still get like five point twos. And New Japan gets six point whatever all the all the time that annoys annoys them. All of the stars, all of the Japanese <laughs> stars. Can't wait for this week. Uh, speaking of this week, we also have Extreme Rules this Sunday. Not this. So- Yay! Yay! Ooh. No, no, boo. Well, Luke's, Luke's monthly uh, time to eat pizza and watch wrestling. Hooray! <laughs> it's fantastic. It's a pretty Thanks good card. Brother. I think the the match I'm most looking forward to is Liv Morgan versus Carmella. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? That is F A B U L A U A S. Hey, that's, uh, I will freak out if Carmella wins that match. Actually, because <laughs> what are we doing with Liv Morgan? Really, what are we doing? Well, what are we doing? Full stop. I mean, like, oh, there's been. The, the, I think the whole card is. So all over the place, it's 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 unreal. I mean, let's 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 go through it in, in, in full, and and what we know. We've got Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair, two. Um, bearing in mind the last time went twenty seconds. We've got Damian Priest against Sheamus, which you know could 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 be a good match. Arguably, my match of the night is Sh- Charlotte Flair against Alexa Bliss, and Alexa could win. <laughs> could i um, think she's yeah. going over i think yeah. I, I think alexa wins it, 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 certainly after what we talked about with with uh rick flair that would certainly be interesting if they uh decide to uh swap the belts over and uh sort of maybe take charlotte off tv who knows uh Good the point. universal title match <laughs> It's probably a foregone conclusion for Roman Reigns versus the Demon Finn Balor. I mean, we, come on! Like they've already ruined it with the Saudi with the Saudi Arabian and the event. Event. I mean, what, what are you uh, doing? The God. Usos versus the Street Profits uh, for the SmackDown titles. They go the Usos versus well, the, okay, the Bloodline versus the New Day tonight on Raw is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> they know how to put on tag team matches, uh, and of course, they've been walking against Carmella. Yeah, I mean. It's, it's, it's it's on any other month it'd be a good card but it's, it's they would need to go full on ecw origins to get as as good a, an extreme rules event as uh as 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 before because quite simply they just got far too much of a gap to make up against uh against uh aew it's ridiculous Let's not forget that a year ago we were watching Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio run around and try to stab each other in the eye, which is I don't, a really yeah, comical let's, let's match. If you think of let's it. forget that, please. Thank yeah, and and the swamp match. Like, can we can we forget those two matches ever happened in twenty twenty? Well, thank love, you. I don't I don't hate the swamp match, but I like the cinematic stuff. So it's oh, the, 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 it, it it wasn't you know, it was all right. It wasn't it wasn't it didn't de- tell too much of a story. It was the only thing we were hanging on to because the pandemic had just started. It seemed like something that should have aired on, on on the network as a segment, you know, by itself, as opposed to actually yeah. being like, you know, part of a pay-per-view. But I love Bray Wyatt, Wyndham Rotunda, you big bearded, beautiful man. You, I hope you show back up on my television very, very soon. I love you. Come back to me. Um, there were some hidden images on the Extreme Rules card. Um, I think it's actually a picture of uh, Becky Lynch, but it's all chopped up and weird. But there was a lot of speculation about that on the internet that I saw today. So who knows? Um, they're going to beat Bianca twice in the in a month. They're going to take her belt and they're going to beat her again because Becky's not losing. Becky's not losing, and Becky will go to Saudi Arabia possibly. Um, God knows how that's going to go. Wonder what kind of T-shirt they'll make her wear. Um, the only the only feasible way Becky loses is if Sasha comes back and then they put Becky back on Raw. That's the only way, only way that they do this. So you would do it. You would do it after the draft or before the draft to switch the titles. I mean, it's really a question of whether it's before or after Saudi Arabia. Because no matter where your creative is going, you let these 
these guys create these storylines and then you have to build your other storylines before and afterwards after it, it's just it it's messed up man well, 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 <laughs> well again this this is the timeline we've got extreme rules this sunday we've then got crown jewel uh in the, the 21st of uh october then we'd probably survive uh, series is announced today november i, th- I think they'll, 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 they might squeeze in another pay-per-view uh, between that then and uh and survivor series and then it'll be tlc royal rumble like that's that's sort of how the cycle goes and with the drafts hanging over them and the fact that they've pretty much all but spelled out Drew McIntyre going to SmackDown. You know? Yep. It's just a new season. It's a refresh. It's a one of those times that this is what WWE does. They come in front of you and they go, Buh! and you're just supposed to forget everything that's happened, you know, uh, ever before that sometimes. Mm. Um, well, more, more to the point that, Reigns is definitely, 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 definitely not losing against Finn Balor on Sunday. It just shows how pathetic yeah. the, the, the booking is, you know? It's pretty bad. I mean, I'll be happy if Alexa goes over. That'll be something that makes me happy. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, let, let, let's go back to Bloodline versus New Day. Spencer uh, brought it up and said, uh, I am uh, White Watch Raw just for the match alone. Bloodline against it. I mean, you could almost swap it over. Street Profits versus the Usos on Raw. Give us Bloodline versus the New Day main event. You know, that, that, that that's the main event of Extreme Rules right there. It is, uh, and we are going to get Street Profits versus Usos for the SmackDown tag titles. That'll be cool. Oh come because- on, Balor has a chance. I mean, the only chance he has is if Brock Lesnar comes out and murders Roman Reigns. That's the only chance, and even then. You're then looking at Reigns versus Lesnar non-title. I mean, come on, come they're, on. They're monster killers. They fire Braun Strowman. They kill the fiend, and they're gonna kill the demon. Just is yeah. what it is. Um, but speaking of fuck WWE, the Owen Hart Foundation strikes a deal with AEW. A major F U to WWE. Amazing. It's right there. Uh, Amazing. Yeah, we think this, uh, you know, we saw a picture of, um, I guess it was Brian holding up Brian Jr. with Owen Hart right next to him. Um, I mean, it's, it, look, it's, they know how to, they know how to pay tribute to the generations before. And I mean, even CM Punk last week on, on Dynamite paying tribute to, uh, what's, what's she called? Is it Audrey? The aunt of uh, Brian Pillman. Oh uh, gosh, I can't remember. But but yeah, the, 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 that that segment and, and paying tribute to her and the fact that they are, it, I guess it may, maybe it's it, it, in the association with Dark Salary the, that, that they honour the history of, of of some of the greatest wrestlers of, of our time with Brian Pillman and uh, now with Owen Hart is that you know it's important that we take care of the legacy going forward and now we're getting the Owen Hart Cup we're getting uh, involvement with the video game uh, <laughs> Owen Hart in an AEW video game there's a sentence I never thought I'd say but I'm, I'm all here for it give me this video game I cannot yeah. wait to play this video game you know the longer you wait the more it's going to be awesome because if you rush greatness it's going to suck we were talking earlier about launching our Twitch channel too, and mark my words, right here on episode two of Buckle Boys Live or Monday Night Bomb Boys or whatever we're going to call it, <laughs> the second that that AEW video game comes out, we will launch our Twitch channel, and it will be me screaming at the television, learning how to play a video game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I cannot wait. Um, in in similar news to this, uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr. is still homeless. Uh, he has been signed by WWE. They don't. Know what to do with him creatively. They haven't put him on a brand yet. I imagine maybe this will get settled at the draft. Um, we hope so. We hope so. Love to see him on TV. Love to see him. Uh, he did some good work in MLW. Uh, he's he's done fantastic work everywhere. Uh, obviously, his father is the, the British Bulldog. Luke, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, he, he worked a dark match. Went down well. They, they signed him. 
um yeah hopefully they, they do something um i mean i i, I don't want to say put him back to nxt uk because that'll be that, that wouldn't be worth his talent and you know considering how uh uncertain nxt uk is at the moment you know you, you don't, that's the last thing you want to be doing uh but yeah get him involved uh he's, he's, he's just got it in spades and please god let him keep the british gimmick within within and don't make him some sort of estonian dinosaur from mars you know like don't don't ruin him they could use a little positive nostalgia right now i think exactly they, they would be very it would be a good idea for them to keep keep him with the british gimmick for sure um more wwe news we saw the first episode of nxt 2.0 we talked about it on the chop shop uh last week we didn't talk about it with hector um what do we expect from this week's episode hector um well to me to me it just depends like nxt 2.0 went over like a 50 50 in my opinion because it depends on what you like and what you don't some people like storylines other people like pro wrestling this was to me a mix some of it i like some of it i didn't like i just like don't have faith with the way wwe executes things so i hope that it goes up from here but i don't have a lot of hope right well we do still have some pretty pretty cool wrestlers we got Isaiah Swerve Scott, who I've always been a huge fan of. I love Hit Row. I think everyone in that group has a lot of charisma and talent. Um, there's there's a lot of potential there, and that's always the case, isn't it? But, uh, you know, you just got to hope that somebody like him doesn't get ricocheted or uh, I don't know. It's just so hard to sometimes to get excited about some of these some of these wrestlers and then seeing what they get, what happens to them on the main roster. For sure, and I think it's it, it, they they need time. They like I, I I'm not sure when the next takeover will be. Whether they'll have one in October or the next one will be War Games. But if I gave you a pencil, Hector and Daniel, what 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 would you put? Who would you put in the War Games? And how would you set up? Gosh, um, I mean, you got to get one more member to hit row, maybe. But I mean. Who are they going to go against? The way? I mean, I don't. And apparently, Austin Theory is probably moving to the main roster now. So I don't know. Who do you put? Wool Games. Like, who's, who's it? Wool Games. Be? Yeah. <laughs> Got to love every time. Probably, um, if, you go, if you go four on four, you probably go Hit Row. And then Loomis, Gargano, and pick two other heels. Exactly, you, you're you're budging it like a Survivor Series team, whereas you know in, in years gone by they've had the undisputed hero just like there, there's your team, right. and we'll take one, two, three, foot right, you're in, go, and you know that's that's how you build it. Um, but yeah, it's you can't credibly book it and say right, th- these are the four on four we we want to see go, and it, as stupid as it sounds the four and four you'd we'd, we'd ideally want to see is the bloodline versus the new day that's your four on like you that, that piggy versus roman reigns going head to head in, in in two cages it would be mental um, what if they're gonna move war games to the main roster say that was to happen that, that'd be that'd be awesome i mean yeah but vince doesn't have to Cajones yeah. to do it. I mean, it's like it would be a pleasant surprise if he did, but I'm not sure if he has the cojones to do it. But he can just call it Hell in a Supercell. It's right there. The fact that he moves Hell in a Cell from October to June was already a massive red flag. <laughs> well, let's let's face it. Hell in a Cell is a big red flag these days, anyway, isn't it? <laughs> big red flag, a big red box. That's we why promise we're. Red- we love positive content, yo. We promise. <laughs> um, that's why we're going to stop talking about WWE. Oh, and then uh, Wrestle World results. Just want to talk about this real quick. You can join us, uh, Buckle Bomb Entertainment's Wrestle World, our prediction league. Got some results here. Not going to use any last names yet because I haven't asked anyone if it's okay. But just so you know, Sarah and Michael are tied. Orlando, what happens? Six to five against Dallas? Or what? Dallas wins. I can't read this. I don't know. Sean beat me. Thanks a lot, Sean. Uh, Big J, who will be back with us next week, 
beat Stu, and we got the JFB winning because Andrew, you gotta fill out your card, bud. It's okay. You're a good predictor. Question is, am I am, am I in this? Am, have I completely like I, I'm in part of far too many like predictions leagues and contests that I I can't keep on top. Like, there's been a couple of times where I have. Um, it's easy to drop the yeah. ball when you're in twelve of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, can y'all just get together and make one for him, please? <laughs> can yeah, we all can just we, be friends? Can we have like an invasion storyline? And it's just I now own all of the Pokemon. I think it's cool that we have like four or five of them though, because we can do like you know we can invade each other or open the forbidden door if we want to, or you know anyway we we're in all these other leagues, a aw league. All F and wrestling, our friends at F and wrestling. Um, you've got uh, freshly squeezed Grand Prix. Uh, yeah. You've got the I, IWF League. Um, yeah. You've got Battle Kingdom Wrestling, which is kind of different because we also use the simulators um, yeah. from a 2K game, which are pretty good. And we've all got, we all have characters. I'm Hangman Adam Page, so I'm clearly awesome. Um, but yeah, if, if you want to join, just send us a message either on the, on the wrestling group page or send us a message to the Buckle Bomb Entertainment Facebook page or send it right to me. Say, I'm in, I want in. Cut me a little promo. Let me know that you want it. We'll put it here on the show. Finally, uh, we're going to get to GCW. Super, super busy these next couple weeks. They've got events pretty much every weekend. Uh, they're working towards a big Box versus uh, Nick Gage uh, for the GCW World Championship match. You've got Minoru Suzuki is uh, still here for another couple weeks. He's all over the place. Um, they're in New York City this weekend. Very, very exciting. They've got, uh, you can see all these, by the way, on, on the Fight Network. Highly recommend it. It's only 14 bucks for a show. You can get 20 bucks uh, for the two packs usually and for all the, all the shows that they have in the weekend. Highly recommend this promotion. You should all be watching GCW, and you should all have an IWTV wrestling subscription. It's 10, 10 bucks a month. Can go towards helping your favorite independent wrestling. This this is what what, what I find interesting, and we, we said about earlier on about MLW having uh, ECW vibes. GCW is the the, the the sequel to ECW. We never really knew, knew we needed um, the way that Nick Gage, the way that Dark Side of the Ring, the way that AEW has helped to promote them in the last uh, weeks and months has been gangbusters. I mean, for fuck's sake, we got Matt Cardona as as GCW. We got Matt Cardona being Nick Gage, man. I mean, if you said that 10 years ago, we'd be laughing. Hey, he did a marvelous job, too. Fantastic (laughs) heel work for Matt Cardona. Um, Apparently, he's now retired from uh, all death matches, so you know, we, we can all sleep easy tonight. Um, (laughs) <laughs> but he, I mean, he, he went pretty hard in the paint last time, so I didn't yeah, ask, exactly. I, I can't blame him. Uh, yeah, at all for that actually. <laughs> Although when that's watch, probably, probably just a troll. Also, when I watch DCW, it just looks like the wrestlers are having fun. As long as the boys are having fun, everybody's having fun because that means everyone's are- happy. Everyone's happy. I've seen. I mean, I've I've been introduced to so many people there that are now on main rosters, other places. Blake Christian, my boy Trey Baxter on NXT. I, should, I fear that they're not going to give him the credit he's due, but he is from one hour away from Memphis in Jackson, Tennessee, and he is a fantastic wrestler, and I'm always rooting for him. Uh, if you if you want to watch an awesome match, you can go. You can even watch it with us. Uh, Buckle Bomb watched Slime Season uh, last year as a watch-along, and you can watch Leo Rush as the Blackheart character against Blake Christian. Holy shit, it's an amazing match. If you don't know anything about the Blackheart character, go check it out. Leo Rush, who's probably going to end up on our TVs uh, here sometime soon. Maybe we see Leo Rush this week. Maybe on Dynamite, maybe on Rampage. Supposed to show up. To quote quote, uh, one of our favorite uh, commentators of all time, Mr. Match Dracker, you never know. (laughs) You never know. Because with what we've been dealt with and i said it before in the last four weeks with punk and with all out and the way the landscape has changed is that you never know what's going to happen next and all you got to do is strap in and enjoy the ride because that's what makes it great because you just enjoy the ride that's what makes it fucking awesome 
It's true. It's absolutely true. We're st- we're living we're living fantastic lives, boys. Buckle boys. Uh, I think that brings us to the end. Any, anything that you want to sign off with, Luke? Any final thoughts? Do you know what? I th- I, th- I think we all, we we all summed it up perfectly. Please like, comment, subscribe to Buckle Bomb Entertainment. Don't forget, Chop Shop coming Wednesday, Thursday. We'll be reviewing how good, bad, or fucking awful the finish to uh, Bloodline vs. New Day was. Uh, we'll be looking ahead to the weekend's uh, Extreme Rules pay-per-view and whatever NXT 2.0 episode 2 decides to, to throw up us. We'll be talking about it, that's certainly for sure. Uh, and then, obviously, at the weekend, we'll be doing Extreme Rules coverage of some shape or form. Um, oh! That's what I forgot to do. Uh, and finally, finally, um, yeah, D- DM Grizzle. I'm afraid we need to uh, ad- address some uh, administrative error. It's not and still, it's no more. Oh, no. Champion after the uh, Name That Tune contest ended up being a tie with Orlando and Steve, was it? It was a tie. It was a tie. Yeah, you're no longer champion. Nah. I'm still trivia champion in my heart. Oh shit, yeah, you are. Yeah. Like yeah, technically. We need I mean we, I, we need I think to... I think we need multiple titles. We need a meeting. <laughs> we need to have a meeting. Um Yeah, we need to figure this out. Look, it's a big <laughs> deal. Uh if I if I have somehow vacated my my title um, as a result of my other professional situations, then yeah, the, uh, you're going to hear from my lawyers. Absolutely. <laughs> That's been the show, ladies and gentlemen. Buckle Boys Live, Monday night. Kaboom, boom, boom. Luke Anthony Walsh, the Mexican Meltzer, Hector. Be safe. Um, don't freak out. It's all good. Watch wrestling. Peace.